Hello. How's everyone doing tonight? I did it again. <laughs> I sanded my rock right before I came on and now I got a uh, little dust everywhere. So this is me cleaning. <laughs> I'll bet you guys are used to it, right? I start live and there it is. You see me straightening up. Terrible. Well, at least you know I try to stay tidy. <laughs> How is everybody? Let me see if I can see the chat. There we are. Hi, Julie. Allison, Jen, Lori. Hello, everyone. Nice to see you guys. And Laura. I do have to find a little thing here for my fingers. Apologize. Okay. So, here's what we're going to be doing. Haha. -ha. Everybody should be getting their foils real soon if you haven't got them already. The um Julie years are coming. Sorry. The metallics. These guys here. So, tonight I'm going to show you you can do metallic A because I know they're very intimidating and B, you can do them good. No. It's fun. We're going to double foil. So, a double foil is when you apply a foil and then you apply another one on top of it. So, thank you. That is what we're going to do. I have three, uh, one, two, three, or five different foils on here. I know it doesn't appear that way, but there's a red and then a fancy, a silver, a gold, and a fancy. And then we're going to do this. We're going to do two. <laughs> mushrooms I know right I'm crazy look fun neon yeah so all right who's up sorry guys just one more minute so we're gonna start with the double foiling the red and Katie said we should bling it with bling for the dots, you know, mushroom dots. <laughs> this is what I'm working with here. So I'm just going to pop it on here. I'm going to try to do them right next to each other. I don't know how well that will work, but we shall see, right? So I'm going start to finish here tonight. I've had some people ask me how I transfer my images. And this is it. I just grab a little piece of scrap carbon paper, whatever. You can use your carbon paper over and over and over and over and over. Can you see all those lines on there? So just because you've used it once, don't feel like you have to throw it out. When you get a set of carbon paper, it should last you years. One piece should last you a month, at least, if you're doing it like me. So I literally, this is a dotting tool stylus. I just got a new set of tools and I'm sorry. <laughs> I, sh I don't know if I should show you guys, but oh my gosh, I'm loving these so much. Let me show you what they are. And then, because <laughs> I know you're going to ask as soon as I start um, painting, because they're really stinking awesome. So they come with these. Uh, yeah, can you see that? Hello. <laughs> awesome awesome detail brushes and on the other end are some really fine dotting tools and these are nice and tiny you know medium sized ball here <laughs> sorry I'm sorry don't be good I mean be good I mean be good <laughs> I'm terrible and it comes with these three and this is an ombre brush. I know that's weird, but uh, one of these days I'll show you how to use this. It's kind of a weird looking brush, but it does some pretty amazing stuff with UV uh, paint. I don't know what this brush is, but I like it for cleaning up foil. <laughs> and this is actually a polish applicator. So I will be using those tonight and I'm going to show you what else it came with. And I don't know how to use this yet, but this tool, <laughs> these are sponge sponges. So they're like, you know, blending sponges. Uh-huh. Yeah. Right. 
So I'm going to learn how to use those. And then I'll show you how to use them. But I have no idea how to use those yet. So if I tried to do it, it would be a disaster. So transferring. I take a stylus because I don't like pencil going everywhere. And I just trace around my image. And it transfers them really, really well. And because we're foiling, you don't have to do anything on the inside. We will put those dots in later. Or we might not even put the dots in because we're going to use the bubbly looking top foil. Hi, Susan, Lonnie, Jen, Laura. Hello, everyone. Oh, Susan has them. Yay. <laughs> See, I have a witness. She can vouch for me. They are looking pretty amazing. I used them just now on the mushroom, on the psychedelic side. Where did I put it? On this one. Oh, they do amazing. That, you guys, you can really only do this with UV paint. <laughs> and it's pretty exciting. Now, you can use... You guys. <sighs> now you know how Rachel feels. Sorry. Okay. Notifications are off. <laughs> what was I saying? Okay. Yeah. Um, you can either mix the neon pigment, which is what I love to do because then I get to control it. You can make your own or you can buy neon UV paint, you know, like nail polish. Make sure it's UV. So, yes, you have to use a light with these uh, techniques that I'm doing tonight. I can't remember if I did this part because I'm talking. <laughs> Oops. Okay, so this mushroom is going to be all over this rock. <laughs> so, let's see where we're at here. Not too bad, huh? <laughs> so, if you get a little, you know, out here with the, see the gray from the carbon paper. Lori sent me these, Mr. Pen White Erasers. And let me tell you something. These things are like magic erasers. Look at that, that's carbon paper. And it's really hard to erase usually. So I'm just gonna take off most of it so that I can barely see what's left on here. Just enough to be able to paint. And then get rid of your little eraser bits. Make sure those are out of your way, fresh out your way. And you can either use ink and brush. Love, 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 love. I'm loving that so much. But for the sake of time, since I want to do both of these mushrooms, we're going to use Posca. This is Black 1MR. <laughs> oh, thank you, Julie. Oh, Julie's sending me a package. Who knows? She's like got a craft store at her house. Oh, I'm excited. Also, this is a Santorini. Um, I think you guys that are on tonight all know what these are. Um, supplied by Santorini Stones by Shelly. So if you're wanting to know how to get a hold of these, um, she has an album in our group now. So you can just pop in there and touch her link and go straight to her group. Join her group and she has some packages available with her rocks. And she sells uh, the beautiful shadow stones and, and rocks. Um, you know, like the really smooth rocks. Shadows and... Uh, I'm sorry, I can't remember what the other ones are called. Oh, that's terrible. All right, I'm putting my gloves on because we are going straight into nail foil glue. The marker is 1MR, and I will show it to you here again. Sorry about that. Sugar Shadow and Santorini. Thank you. It was Sugar Shadow. That's it. PC 1MR, and this is black. 
it's like a a nib not you know they have another one 1m and it's it's a pointier point but it i don't necessarily like it better i like this one i'm not saying the other one's no good i just prefer this one over that one uh gotta find my foils all right foil glue sister get your stuff together <laughs> I have some left from the sample I was making there, you know, that funny mushroom over there. Let me use this up. So we are going to paint the whole mushroom cap with foil glue. And this is Beetle's Nail Art Foil Glue. If I get out of shot, you guys yell at me because I've got another all-new setup going here. My husband came in and did some magic in my studio. You know, Miss Katie came over and organized me. And then my husband came in and he put desks along an entire wall. I had, one, I had two desks in here, but they were kind of in an L. So now I have a whole entire wall that's a desk. <laughs> and then... It's cool. It's attached to the wall, too. It's like part of the wall. It is the coolest thing ever. And now my gear, you know, the camera stand and the lights and all the, what would that be? I don't know, camera gear stuff is, has its own, it doesn't have to be attached to the table. It's like attached to the wall. It's part of, it's almost professional in here. <laughs> it's, I'm almost grown up, guys. <laughs> So, I am definitely flaming it with the torch. This is a fire torch. It's like a cigar lighter. You can pick them up at any smoke shop or Amazon sells. Um, they don't really sell them under cigar torch. They're more kitchen torches, like for brulee. Okay. And I'm going to cure that for one cycle with our handy dandy Mac Art 6 watt with the white legs. White, white legs. Don't buy the pink legs, okay? Something's up with the pink legs on the light. I don't know what it is, but it's too strong. You see how dim that light is? And then it gets brighter. Watch it. It starts off low and then it comes up slowly. Now see it's brighter. I don't know if you can see that. A lot brighter. Anyways, that's what you want. If you start off like overpowering with it, it will wrinkle your glue. And that's no bueno. Hi, Kathy. Let's see, Noel's on. Oh, Julie, that's a good idea. I don't know. I don't think it is because I have both of those and they seem to be pretty similar. It, Julie's asking about the ones from Five Below if it could be the same. Have you tried them? Do you know? Hi, Sherry. All right, one cycle. Now, I did the other mushroom red, the sample, the example. Mm. Look at this. It's so cool, huh? So I'm going to do this one different colors so we can see all the different colors that I'm, I have available in, should we do the dark blue? <laughs> I love this blue. I want to do this one. What do you guys think? We'll do this one up top, dark blue down here and uh, maybe the green. That way they'll all have been used. What do you think? This one or dark? I don't know. What do you guys want to see? Baby blue, all right, here we go. So with metallic, you want to be precise about your placement so that you have no wrinkles when you lay it down because it is not forgiving. It, it will show you the bad, the good, bad, and the ugly. So I want you to see, see the bubbles under it? Can you see this? This is also, it came with a spatula set. See how it has like a bubbly, it's, let me show you, the normal spatulas look like this. 
don't know how to show you. Can you see that, how it comes straight to a point and then they have a curve here? This one is like thicker. It's beefy. It's got hips, <laughs> like me. Anyways, <laughs> that said, it's really great for doing foil, for getting those edges down there. So if you don't have a silicone tip nail tool, this comes in handy. Yes, I broke my tool again. So I'm waiting on another one and embarrassed to show you my other one. <laughs> so this does work really, really great. When you lift your foils, you wanna lift slow. And I'll show you why. See, see the spots there? Oh, you can't see those, but can you see these right here? These spots. Come on, focus. See them right there, those spots? That means it didn't transfer to your rock. See that right there? Why are we not focusing? Okay, so you don't want to lift it all the way off. You want to turn it right back on to where it was. Press them back in. But be careful when you're pressing on metallic because it will even pick up your fingerprints. So just be gentle and then relift it until you get a good transfer. And then look at that, right? Psychedelic, we just need the disco. No, no. I love how they go around. Watch the squares, see the dance. It's dancing. It looks animated, doesn't it? I love these foils, they are crazy cool. <laughs> So it doesn't have to be perfect because you can reline and all that. So here you can see, see where I missed them. Take your foil. You can try to line it back up or you can just grab another section and fill it in gently. Remember to be gentle like so and then move on to your next section and when you're all done reline and it tidies it back up that is probably my biggest tip about foiling is you have to tidy up when you're done you have to just know that there's going to be some work to do when you're done foiling because you you want all that work you just did to be worth it right so it's basically like leaving it unfinished if you don't tidy it up All right, I just put some in my dish, my messy dish. <laughs> and I'm gonna come right in here and do this under cap. I forgot what that's called. It has a specific name. And I love that part of the mushroom. I love the way it tastes, but I love staring at them. Have you guys ever looked underneath the cap of a mushroom, like really looked at it? Oh, they're amazing. <laughs> It's like their little lungs, you know? There you go. I get um, perplexed by things. <laughs> All right. And I am not being light-handed with the glue. That's kind of debatable. Some people say lots of glue. Some people say very thin. I say... Do it how you like it. I like it to be cushiony feeling. I like it to be bubbled. Can you see that? And I'm gonna, you do run a risk of it, of it wrinkling when you use it thicker like I do. If you're having trouble with it wrinkling, I highly suggest until we figure out what the culprit is. Gills, thank you, Jen. The gills, the gills. Yes, I'm in love with the gills. <laughs> uh, get yourself a little 12. See those lights in there? There's 12 of them. 12 LED UV handheld UV light, flashlight. This is a humongous help, an amazing tool to have with your foiling. It's almost, I would say, necessary, especially when you're doing attaching things like little rhinestones or uh, 3D wings. <laughs> you know, when you have two hands, you need help. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, Laura. The liquid 
Is that what you're asking? What is this liquid? Is nail art foil glue? Is that what we were asking? Okay, so underneath I'm going to use, I think I'll do the dark blue and then the green for the stock. Or should I do silver under and dark blue stock? <laughs> I don't know guys, I like it when you guys get involved. Na -na. So we have these three colors. <laughs> Oh, maybe the green under, huh? Silver under. Yes. Deborah's saying, um, no, she's asking if the flashlight is just to get it started so it doesn't wrinkle. That's a great technique, actually. You can get it going because it usually won't wrinkle glue so you can get it started. But this cures it faster. Generally, it's done in 15 seconds or less. So if you're using this, you don't really need to pop it into anything else unless you're doing the 3D work with resin. That always has to go in for another cure. Okay, so we're gonna put down that foil. Silver under. Thank you, Lori and Jen. Thank you, Lori. Amazing. Okay. And so when you're lifting, you just want to make sure and check as you go. Just don't rip them off too fast because you want to make sure you have a good, good, good transfer. And a good transfer is when you don't see anything left behind. See that? Perfect. Yay. And now we have our dancing mushroom again. <laughs> I'm kooky. Oh, you guys, we could do this too. <laughs> okay, I'm going to mess you up one more time. <laughs> should have done this under there. I should have done that under there, huh? This way. We could do three. You could do... That'll be our double layer for under there. How about that? That'll be the gills. Yes. I'm thinking. All right. So for this part, we're going to do the dark blue or the green. Hi, Bambi. Dark blue. All right. Thank you, Julie. And I just got to put this little information in there. If you are watching this and it has been previously recorded and you don't see the comments on your screen, if you have a computer, you can enable the comments. If you're on a TV, some smart TVs allow you to also enable comments. So you won't. This isn't for us tonight, guys. This is for future <laughs> after the fact viewing. So I just wanted to put that in there. If you're confused about who I'm talking to, what's going on, this is recorded live on YouTube today. What is today, you guys? <laughs> oh my gosh, what's today? Lord. <laughs> today is Wednesday, right? August 4th, I believe. Okay, so I'm going to use this one so you guys can see. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so see how nice and glassy clear that is? So if you hit it with this from a little distance, dun, 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 it kind of cures that surface real good. See the bubbles come up? That's normal. Don't freak out. It's all of the glue usually does it. Sometimes it doesn't, but generally those little bubbles are normal. And there's not really anything you can do about that because the rocks are porous. Even if you light it and torched it all day long, they're still going to have little bubbles coming through and that's done see so how much see how much faster that is oops actually 
it's not done. It feels done, but it's not quite done. Sorry. Do it this way. So I think you guys can tell that it takes a little bit more care with the metallics, but it can be managed. And that's what I want you to know. They're frightening, but they can be managed. You just have to really practice a little bit, obviously, before you go into some gorgeous big, you know, project that you're working on and on a great rock that you have picked out. Please, please, please practice with your metallics. They're not like the other foils. And they are the fussiest of the bunch and the ones that most of us struggle with and throw out the window. <laughs> These particular ones are all easy release. I call them that. All the foils I'm getting a hold of, I'm getting them intentionally from a certain a distributor who is telling me they are easy release. You know, like they really are easy to work with. Like this one's sort of transparent. Can you see through it a little bit? It's kind of cool. Anyways, they just come off real easy. They don't have sticky problems okay so we've got the three colors there and there's a little bit around here that didn't come off just pop that back down there very cool looking all right so this is what I want to do on the top to give it that mushroomy look. Oops, I missed it, Deborah. Yes, sorry. Um, the nail foil glue leaves a sticky surface so that the foils can grab onto it. Um, but it's it's almost like a perfect combination. It's weird because not everything will work. Like you can get some foils to stick to like double stick tape, but then the double stick tape won't stick to your rock. It'll roll right off. So that's why we're using the foil glue because it works on the rock and on the foil. It's a double way street. So like if you can put on E6000 double tack or whatever it's called or E tack it or whatever, they look good and it's a good idea, but not solid because they peel off the rock. So... Tacket works in some situations. I think if you do the entire rock in Tacket, I don't remember. Susan, I think, uses one. Susan or ah, I can't remember. Anyways, somebody uses Tacket for something. <laughs> okay, get back on track, woman. Okay, double foiling. So you're we're literally going to put another layer right on top of that one. And you just do the same procedure. Add the glue right to the top. I don't recommend using it the way I'm doing it. Use your little brush. But I'm trying to save a little bit of time here. So I'm going to put this here and then I'm going to use my brush around. So it's kind of hard to see when you're doing the second layer, so you really want to watch with the glare on the rock. And the glare will show you where you're going and where you've been. Again, don't worry if... Uh, your edges are, see how ratty my edges are a little bit? Don't worry about none of that because you can touch it up. What you want to worry about is what this beefy part looks like. Am I missing pieces? Are there holes? Is it wrinkled, bubbled? Can you see a lot of damage? And if that happens... You can refoil right over the top of it. If you don't like the way your your metallic looks, do another layer like we're doing right here. Just pop the glue right back on top of it 
and then do it again. Now, there's a third thing you can try if if it doesn't work to your liking. You can use a base coat uh, under the foil glue, cure that, put the foil glue on, cure that, and then apply your foils. And usually that'll stop a lot of the trouble you have with the glue. Base coat's made to work with glue. Bye, Sherry. Thanks for checking in. So, Deborah, the light is, um, it's kind of like a sweet spot, and you do got to work with it a little bit. But if you just remember to use 6 watt only on the glue or the torch. These two only on the glue, which is the nail art foil glue. The big light is for resin and top coat and stuff like that. But nail art foil glue, these two kind of lights is all that should be used. And if you're lucky enough to be using a big light and it's working, bless your heart because <laughs> so often it doesn't and that I don't know what the combination is there. Some people have a light that happens to work, but most of the time you need the small, not in your face light. Hi, Karen. <laughs> I know what fun mushrooms, right? Look at this. Ooh. <laughs> We're going to do that one next. All right. So once that's cured, we're going to pop on our topper, our second layer. We're double layering foil tonight. And again, if you see the bubbles, you know you're going to really want to come up slow. Don't just rip it all off at once. Those bubbles mean that it's not touching the glue. So to get it to connect, you have to pull up and re re redo it. See all of that that's in there? we got to put that back down. So lay it back down. Now the bubble's gone. You should have a nice transfer. There you go. Pretty. All right. So I'm going to use this foil, which is also a Wanda foil. So pretty. All of these are, by the way. I'm going to use that right in here for the gills, but I'm going to use it this way. Isn't that cool? So this will be our double foil. Technically, this would have been fine on its own, <laughs> but I changed my mind after I did the silver one. So It's really cool the effects you can make by if you really study your foils. Just um, put on your creative hat and move them around. I call it mapping out my foils. You know, when you're trying to block in some color and you don't know what you're going to put where. When you're color swatching your walls, same deal. When you're torching, be careful because you can burn, melt your foil that's already on there. If you're wondering what I'm doing with this hand, I'm hiding this glue over here from the light. <laughs> hmm. So this tie-dye, this is so, so much fun. And it's so easy, you guys. I think you're going to be excited to run out there and do it, like, right away. <laughs> Probably even more exciting than the foil. So, 
all I used to do it was a top coat and the neon powder pigment and a liner brush. That's it. <laughs> Laura, I do not do nails. Isn't that crazy? I was trained to do nails, but I didn't pick that as a profession. I'm a retired makeup artist. So I know quite a bit about nails, but I don't do them professionally. Though I could have. You missed all sorts of mushrooms. What? No, you didn't. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> cool, cool, coolness. All right. So down here, I'm going to put this kind of crackly bit on the stem. See that? Isn't that cool? Oh, Karen, we're still going to be doing this one. This is my sample rock. I think, <laughs> don't worry, we're going to be doing this one. I haven't showed anybody how to do it yet. <laughs> All right, Julie, careful. <laughs> I think mushrooms can fly. <laughs> oh, no, wait. Is that right? No, I don't know. Hi, Christine. Who did I miss? Not forever not being able to pick the foil up off of the table. Tweezers come in handy. <laughs> Fly away, she says. All right, so on this part down here, look, it looks purple. How pretty is that? Uh, let's see, I want like a good amount of crackle. I'll turn it this way. You want this part. All right, nice. So now here's the part where you want to touch up. So after you have your double foil, now each section has had two foil applications to it. And the bottoms are all metallic and the tops are holographic, special, you know, design. So now I'm just adding the lines back in here.
See the difference touching up makes? All the difference in the world. Now I have to do, because Miss Katie said, it was her big request. <laughs> we got to put the dots on, right? Bum, bum, bum. Oops, those might be too big. Are those too big? Where's my little... Yeah, those are too big. But cool, huh? Ooh, I have some pretty blue ones. If those are smaller. Those would be good. We need white, huh? We need white. We gotta have white or light. Light colors or white. We'll just do regular silver crystals. Yep. Round. Mm, new, new rhinestones. Isn't that fun? That's always fun. <laughs> okay, actually, I'm going to wait to put those on until we do the other mushroom. That way, if I got to turn this over. Oh, that was close. All right, are you guys ready for some fun, fun? Not that this wasn't. This was tons of fun. But I just got to change gears here. Move the foil out of the way. And then move the neon into the program. So for me, I'm going to be mixing the neon paint on a palette. Um, I just use a piece of, it's kind of like butcher paper. It's the back of a label, mailing label. First off, I got to put this guy on my rock. Same thing. I should have done them all at the same time. At least it's an easy transfer, right? Just... Trace around your image. Like I said, they're reusable many, 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 many times, the carbon papers. See? Easy peasy. All done. And I'm just going to take my eraser in there and get rid of most of that. Make sure you keep your eraser bits out of your workspace. Those are a nightmare. All right, we are switching gears to top coat. So put your nail foil glue out of the way. Because, <laughs> man, you can mix that up really bad. Oops. Sorry, one more thing. Just so we have something to work in, makes it easier. Okay. Uh oh. Well, dang it. Hey, wines works too, Laura. <laughs> Bring out the wine. Ooh, I should have done that. I'm sorry, Susan. <laughs> yeah, I could have flipped it so it faces the other one. That probably would have been fun. Then they wouldn't have looked so semi, samey, samey. These are my sample rocks, so hopefully it won't be. I'm not doing that. Jeez, get out of the way. I gotta make paint. <laughs> I'm confusing myself. <laughs> All right, so I want seven piles. Piles. It's not a lot of paint that you need, not very much. It's just like a drip. See, just a little drip. Seven of those.
and this is how I made the paint for the neon geckos also so if you were if you missed that one this is how that was done and this is where the liner brushes come in to play just sort of get one into your top coat and I'm gonna put these in the order I'm gonna go in so do you want to pick up a bit here? And they really do blend so easily. And then make sure you have um, some little wipes or what I do is cut up shop towels into little squares. You know, the big blue towels, I just cut them into little squares. Make sure you have something like that handy so that you can clean your brush in between. Top coat. This is top coat. Um, and this is actually Jelixer top coat that I've put into the Beatles bottle. I have a refill, a big refill of top coat that I refill my bottle with. But it's not, I can't say that it's any, I can't tell the difference between it and Beatles, so... <laughs> It's not something that is necessary unless you use a massive amount of it. Like someone we know. So this takes a bit of time, but I gotta tell you, I think you guys know that I like to make paint. <laughs> this is no different. I just, I like this too very satisfying to me to mix paint. You guys are probably not doing it though, huh? <laughs> Is it like watching paint dry? <laughs> Yay, me too. Me too, Deborah. I like to turn on YouTube in the evening when I'm going to bed and pull up the watercolor making videos. A lot of them don't even have, they don't talk. You know, they just show you the process. And I love it so much. Oh my gosh, it's so awesome. It's so visually satisfying. Even the sounds of it, I guess that's called what, ASMR? The sound of them grinding the paint on the glass and mixing it with the water. It's all so unbelievably lovely. <laughs> I'm glad you guys like to see the whole process. Thank you, Jen. It's, um, oops. I'm not ready to do that yet. My, my tools are jumping in the paint. Tell them, simmer down. <laughs> I like to see the whole processes of things too. So how you make the product and what you do with it, where it goes, even the mistakes. I want to see that. Whoops, like that. I want to see it all. What is going on here? I'm flipping it around. 
You know, orange and blue don't make a very pretty color, so they better stop it. They say opposites attract, right? <laughs> Apparently the blue doesn't want to stay in the top coat. It just wants to be everywhere else. Oops, I closed the purple. What is going on? Hi, Cindy. Um, Susan, I get the Delixer on Amazon. I know you're up in Canada, but this is what mine is. It's a large bottle Delixer no wipe top coat, 226 grams. It's eight ounces, and it's usually American dollars, right around 40. Between it's always, if it's not on sale, it's like usually 45 dollars. It's usually between 29 and 45, and it varies. So, that was a lot of powder. <laughs> Oops. I had to add some top coat, maybe. Generally, the rule is you don't want more than 10% of the powder ratio to your top coat. But who's going to measure these little tiny bits? It can compromise the integrity of the paint. And it won't cure right. But we cover it with top coat when we're done. So it seals up fine anyway. So don't, don't worry about that. Oh my gosh, Julie. Man, what does your husband say? Like, you guys got to get a storage unit, huh? <laughs> For all the craft supplies. He probably hates me, doesn't he? All right. Yay. Here we go. Everyone ready? This goes fast, so get your peepers on. Have your um, handy dandy wipes ready with a little alcohol for in between colors. So I just put a bit of alcohol on the paper. All right, here we go. Hopefully I don't mess this up. I'm going to start with the dark magenta at the top and we're just going to paint stripes so easy and they don't have to be perfect and then I'm going to go to this pink down here Orange. It's important between the next color, the orange and the yellow, that you have a clean brush because you want that yellow to pop. And then green.
Oops, sorry. I'm kind of going out of the frame there. My bad. Let's do a better job here. <laughs> See if I can get this in here too. And then blue. And gel is so easy to um, play with. It's so much easier than paint, you know, like acrylic. I think it is anyways. I just, I like the way it just seamlessly <laughs> blends together. And back to the magenta. Pink. Oops, sorry. Okay. Let's see. When it was over here. Maybe the... Oh, no. <laughs> Let's see. I might have to make a little more paint. I'm sorry, guys. Thank you, Susan. A lot. I appreciate that. Thank you. Right, and I'm gonna layer the blue. I'm gonna go back through the colors again.
little magenta and then a little pink there. Okay. <laughs> you guys ready for the fun part? Okay, so we're going to make tie-dye. Now, with top coat, you see all those bubbles on there. It doesn't really work with the torch very well, but I'm going to do it anyways. It worked a little. Okay, so to do the tie-dye, take your brush, pull straight down. So super cool, huh? It's so easy. It's crazy cool. I'll clean that out of there in a minute, but it's easier to clean out of there than to fix in the paint. Isn't that neat? <laughs> so to clean up top coat, all you need is alcohol. Just a little bit. And let it clean right up. Easy peasy. And then you gotta cure it. Isn't that cool looking? Fun. Let's see if I can drag it just a little bit better. So on the other mushroom, I hadn't gotten any farther than this. <laughs> so you guys can help me design the rest of the mushroom and uh, finished it. All right, so at this point we need to cure it. So that will stay there. Oh no. I think my light died. Oh no, there we go. Oh, look at this too. Look how cool. It's fluorescent. It's neon. So it does neon stuff. Isn't that fun? Oh, you guys should see this in real life. Look at that. I'm curing it, so I'm just letting you guys watch while it's working. <laughs> Oops, sorry. Okay. I gather. Yep, good. Good cure. All right, so what should we do with the rest of it? Psychedelic mushroom. Boom, boom, boom. I think I'm going to put some of the fun, flashy foil down there. I'm going to paint it black first. This is the ink, Dollar Rowney ink. It dries super fast, it's super thin, and it is super dark. So one coat is all you need. 
and like I, you only have to dip your brush once <laughs> and that's way more than you need While that's drying, I'm going to take my liner brush, make sure it's clean. My other liner brush. I'm going to touch up the mushroom. Okay, that should be dry really quickly. You guys ever wonder what that noise is? <laughs> Do you want to see? This crazy, ugly, icky thing right here. See those grates in the bottom of it? It's me taking my brush and running them across the grate to get the paint out of the ferrule. And that's what they're there for. All right, now that that is done and dry, add some foil glue here. torch and cure it. What foil are we going to put there? I have like 102,000 foils, but what do we want to see there? Oh boy. I don't even know, guys.
All right, hang on. Boom, boom, boom. What should we put down there? Some of this fun crackle rainbow foil still a little left we could do some of that right there what do you think the blue maybe the blue huh or I'm going to go with the blue. All right. Yes. Uh, yes, thank you. That looks pretty. So, for the stock. Oh, my goodness. Oh, look what I did. I made a mess. <laughs> Boy. Good grief. That's okay. I'll clean that up in a minute. So what should we do down here? I think maybe the green would be good this time. I'll show you guys how I fix that. I mean, it's not like a big brainy thing. <laughs> if you can scrape it off, that's great. If not, like if it's ink, you can touch it up with a little paint. Or you can move your line, make your line thicker around your image. Like the outline. I have a dragon that I did that I kept messing up the outline and the line around it kept getting thicker and thicker and thicker and it ended up being one of the coolest dragons I've ever done. And you guys have seen it. And I'm going to show you again that even if you make that big of a mistake, it's not lost. Look at this cool dragon. And that outline worked in my favor. I was very shaky when I did this one, so I just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. I do like the neon glow. <laughs> I don't think I will ever get tired of that. It's like electric.
Now it's going to look like a sticker, you know, like you did it intentionally. It's like when you fall on your face. Oh yeah, I meant to do that. That's part of the routine. <laughs> right? And then I think in here we're going to put the, um, <laughs> what do you guys call it? The gills. The gills. Back in here. So I'm going to start here. Like that. I'm going to go around my mushroom with the black. Okay, now I do like the psychedelic mushroom. <laughs> I sure do. Bling, 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 bling. It's bling, bling time. Blingity, bling, bling, bling. So I got these for this one. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Anybody see what I did with my picture? Isn't that cute? Look at that. Gotta love that. You could do the same kind on the other one. That would be nice and contrasting. Oh, cool. Ooh, I like those on this one. Yeah, why make it complicated? Oh my gosh, those look great. <laughs> so, two ideas, completely different styles, using nail products all the way around. A Posca pen and some ink. Anyway, so to seal them, I've, you know, I'm on this kick with sealing my work, just the work on the rock. I like the contrast between 
my image and the rock or you can you know seal the whole rock you think yellow yellow dots over here Lori that's kind of cool idea yeah I don't know if I have yellow big ones <laughs> me yeah I don't I have yellow. I have this size. That might work. <laughs> you know, I'll bet you that'll be very pretty. Let's see. You guys know I'm always up for collaboration for real. You know, you might be right. Thank you, Julie, for hanging out. Pretty cool. All right, here they are. So, what do you guys think? Do you like the um tie dye? <laughs> I'm so, it's silly. I'm like a little kid. I love that tie dye. Oh my gosh. And of course, I saw it on a nail. So when I saw them do it, I my brain it often explodes. So I had another brain explosion. I had to like jump on here and show you guys. <laughs> it's so funny. I'll be cooking dinner or whatever and see something on YouTube, and then run in here and I'll test it out, and then I jump on like as soon as it works. <laughs> Sometimes I don't even test it. Sometimes I just jump on and. <laughs> do it with you guys for the first time yeah I'm crazy okay so I think do you want to see me seal it and put them on there or are you guys good with knowing how to seal your rocks because I don't mind either way thank you Deborah. yeah I like the tie-dye I think the most too but I do want to um, you guys to know that it's totally okay to feel intimidated by metallic foil they are you know a little bit scary and I still kind of shy away from them myself but I feel like we, they don't have to be that way you know just jump in there and give them a go I think you'll be okay you'll be happy and they're beautiful Okay, I'm going to go ahead and seal it. I have a vote. That's all I need is one. Thank you, Kathy. I'm just getting the stuff out of the way so I don't get to... Uh, I'm going to use top coat all over the place. And if you guys wonder why I use top coat a lot, is because it seals in 30 seconds. <laughs> 30 to 60 seconds and it's done. And, you know, on live, that's a... A plus top coat is resin it's just a different formula of resin so forgive the arm okay just a second I'm going to file this boo-boo off of my rock here So, 
It's the same thing. This is top coat. So I'm going to go just past my line. So that the whole image is sealed to the rock. Not that it would get up and walk away, but <laughs> you know, sometimes paint lifts or peels. This can too. So if you touch outside of the paint, it bonds with the stone. If you can seal it all in one go, that's best because it does leave, you know, um, definite lines if you do sections. And if you're going to do sections, do it, break it at the sections in your artwork. The top coat is pretty self-leveling, so just give it a minute to breathe, you know, let it do its thing. So while that's working, I'm going to put the rhinestones in the top coat. So those will be nice and sealed in there. Bye, Jen. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know what to do with these rhinestones tonight. Okay. I don't know. I don't want them all symmetrical, but... All right, now that that's good, I'm just going to set the stones with this one. Oh, yeah, these, these glow, too. See the rhinestones? Aren't they cool? <laughs> you know, that was a total. I stumbled upon that. Um, Let's see. I know that these our color fast however I don't know a single yellow or red on this planet that holds up in the Sun very well any red or yellow even if it's on a building will fade over time so I would say for a while it might work outside I don't I don't really like paint on rocks for outside it doesn't work too good if you're going to use paint on use like a outdoor paint multi-surface this you know is nail polish it might hold up better than regular acrylic the neon is good the yellow might fade before anything good to go nice and cured <laughs> glow in the dark rhinestones. Yes, you saw that. Not glow in the dark. They're glow in the black light. They can't be charged. I think they do make glow in the dark rhinestones, though. These are glow in the neon. <laughs> in the club. 
glow in the club. We'll call them that. <laughs> All right, uh, mushroom number two. Call this one our healthy one. It's got a nice thick line. <laughs> Man, I love that. Oh my gosh, it's so cool. <laughs> So, you know, this application can be used on, I just chose a mushroom. Actually, Katie chose a mushroom. I could not think of anything to do tonight. So, she sent me a picture of mushrooms and definitely, it first made me want to paint a frog. Does anybody know what the correlation there is? Why did looking at mushrooms make me want to paint a frog? <laughs> I couldn't figure that out. It was very odd. But... I went with the mushroom because I wanted to do the tie-dye. I thought, <laughs> what's better than a mushroom? Trippy, right? You found a frog with a mushroom on his head? <laughs> hey, Katie! <laughs> Wow. Well, I need to see that. I don't know. Maybe I saw a frog on a mushroom or something somewhere and I saw some frog mushroom art. Mushroom froggy art. I don't know. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I haven't had any mushrooms lately, so you know. I have never had any. <laughs> Okay, rhinestones on. Oh, no, no, no. I don't know. Oh my gosh, this is driving me nuts. Uh, okay, I'm going to stop. Just leave it. It's good. You guys can't even see that, huh? The glare. There. Pretty. I said I was going to quit, but did I? No. <laughs> oh, I should do a frog with tie-dye. That's a great idea. I got to do a frog. I've been thinking of a frog. <laughs> I just can't find the frog I want to do. I found one in my coloring book. In one of my coloring books. Yes, I still color in coloring books. Um, It's really big and fat and cool. He's got a big fat head and a big fat smile. Love it. So what do you guys think about my funky mushrooms? <laughs> okay, it's more about the techniques here. No judging the mushroom. So the technique, we got double foil all over here and we got this cool tie-dye and foil combo over here. Some ideas, you know, you can mix everything around, mix and match, and have some fun with it. Anyways, that's what I got for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, had some fun with me hanging out. I sure do love hanging out with you guys. If you enjoyed what you saw here today, be sure to hit that subscribe button. I That really helps my channel grow and helps others to find us when you hit that button then youtube suggests it more often also share share with anybody you would like to check it out 
and hit the bell if you want to be notified when I do this. When I come on live, that bell, YouTube will notify you. They'll help me to help you to find me. Anyways, thank you guys so much. Good night, everyone. Mwah. Oh, wait, one more thing. Don't don't leave yet. <laughs> me and Katie will be live on Facebook, 7.30 p.m. Friday Central, doing The Mermaid. And I will upload that tomorrow, post it so you guys have like 24 hours notice, okay? Now, now, now you can go. <laughs> okay, good night. Bye-bye.